everybody, it's Michelle Lennon here from How to Train a Dream Dog. I am your go-to for all things puppy. It's that time when you ask me questions and I give you some answers. Now, this question comes all the way from our Puppy Training with Michelle Lennon Facebook group. All right, Leanne posts, this is my baby Ada. She is three months old and is doing well with potty training, except when I leave her too long during the day but mostly when she goes on her pee pads. Now, my question is, she gets really excited when I come home or if she encounters a neighbor outside and then she starts peeing all over while jumping around with excitement to see somebody. Does anybody know if this will last a while or what may I do to stop it? I'm hoping she outgrows it. All right, now before I get started, I want you guys to hit that thumbs up to let me know you're watching. And be sure to subscribe so you know immediately when I post new training videos like this one. Okay, Leanne, I do have a bunch of helpful tips for your situation. Here we go. First things first, Ada is absolutely adorable. I love the markings on her face. Now, I'm gonna break this post down into a few different parts since there are a few different topics going on here. And honestly, I think everybody's gonna benefit uh, from as much information as possible. Now, Ada is only going to be able to hold her bladder for about one hour per month of age. This is pretty typical for most dogs. When you leave, make sure that Ada is in her crate um, that's just the right size for her. We don't want a crate that's too big, otherwise she's likely to have accidents in it. Now, you can peek at this video here. Um, all about the crate size if you think that she might need a smaller crate or to help avoid accidents and make sure that she doesn't build up anxiety. Now I cover the crate and I play calming music for my dogs when I leave. Actually Leanne and all the viewers out there if you want here's a link to all my crate training videos I have on YouTube. There's a whole crate training playlist. Now, there are a ton of tips to help me crate training positive and successful. All right, now let's talk about those pee pads you mentioned. I'm not a big fan of pee pads as they encourage our pups to go potty in the house. They often get chewed up once our puppy hits that nine to 10 week mark and sometimes a little bit older. Uh, plus, most puppies start missing the pad completely and going next to it or in a whole nother room altogether. Now, you can actually watch my stop uh, using pee pad video here. The better behavior to teach your puppy is potty outside instead of in the house. We can take our puppy outside in the grass and reward them for going outside. Now, the more reinforcement they get for going outside, the faster they will potty train. For those of you that would love a free lesson on potty training or a sample puppy schedule or even my potty chart um, that I use to keep track of what happens and when, be sure to grab the free new puppy starter kit. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. Now let's talk about the bigger question here. Excited pee and how to stop it. This is definitely something we are going to want to work on as it is one of those things or behaviors that not all puppies just outgrow naturally. As a matter of fact, it can get much worse if we continue with some of the behaviors of our own when Ada is around. Here's the deal. When a puppy is exposed to something exciting, their heart rate starts pumping and the blood starts flowing faster through their system. So does the adrenaline. A puppy's body can only run so many systems internally at once, so one of them is bound to misfire. This would be your puppy's ability or inability to hold their bladder when exciting situations pop up, at least until their systems are fully developed and they're more mature. Now, what makes your puppy's internal system go haywire even more is if the stimuli is too close to them or they get some sort of interaction or reinforcement for every behavior you're wishing they would stop, such as excited tinkles on the floor. You see, when you come home, Ada thinks this is the best part of the day. You have returned. Cue the confetti, cue the music, the balloons, the party, the music. Now, she already started to get excited when she heard the car pull on the driveway. And then she became even more excited when the door opened and you entered and oh my gosh, you spoke to her and she's hanging on every word you say. By that point, her tail is probably going 100 miles an hour and the adrenaline is pumping through her little system at top speed. Since Ada is only about three months old, uh, her system isn't fully developed yet. So her brain and her bladder 
aren't 100% on the same page yet. It often takes our puppies a few weeks to a few months to have a strong enough bladder muscle to hold it for longer periods of time, especially when something exciting happens. Something else that's happening to Ada? She is getting reinforcement and attention for being over the top excited. Since reinforcement builds behavior, this means Ada is getting rewarded for jumping around and peeing all over. Now. I know it may be hard for you and guests and neighbors to resist Ada's cuteness until she is calm, but calmness is what we really want to reward. What needs to happen first is Ada needs to learn some foundation impulse control games that we cover inside our on-demand online training course called 30 Days to Puppy Perfection. We can slowly start to teach Ada how to be calm and patient when she sees someone or something she'd like to say hi to or check out. What I often talk about in training is the magic line or the threshold. The threshold is the distance away from a distraction or a trigger before a puppy reacts. If we cross over the threshold or get too close before our puppy is ready to handle the trigger, the puppy will likely not be able to stay calm and under control. This threshold is different for each dog and will change with each new trigger and an environment that you're working in. This is why your pup might be calm in your house, but when they meet a neighbor outside, they lose their cool. The outside stimuli and the distractions can add to your puppy's overstimulation. Now, I always tell my students they have the trainer's permission to tell other people who want to pet their puppy, whoa, <laughs> we're in training right now and working towards our certification. You can help us uh, with our puppy's calmness by only petting my puppy when she is calm and sitting. If she gets up, you have to stop the petting and step away. I know it's not easy to tell someone to stop while you work on getting your puppy calm, but we have to be the advocate for our puppy. They can't do it themselves. If everyone keeps petting our puppy while they're jumping and peeing, we're going to feel way worse if they get peed on or scratched. And of course, puppy isn't going to learn how to have the best manners possible. What our students in 30 Days to Puppy Perfection are practicing right now is something I like to call pre-training. This means they are training their puppy before they need to pull out the command when the distractions are higher. Think of pre-training as if it is a dress rehearsal. There are lots and lots of dress rehearsals before the show happens. In this type of lesson, the show would be a meet and greet with someone else. We would have to have a lot of dress rehearsals with limited distractions or people at a far distance away, far enough that Ada isn't overly excited. We would work on this for several training sessions before we increase the distraction level or work closer to the people Ada wanted to say hi to. Now, in the course, I cover some other fun games to help our pups stay more focused on us and avoid distractions as well. These games come in handy when we are out and about outside. Now, the key to a successful meet and greet is a lot of dress rehearsals without tipping over that threshold. If we move too fast through the training, we will likely see setbacks and Ada will revert back to excitedly peeing when she sees guests or neighbors, or if she gets too close to them too soon. Before I share my last tip, if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button to get notified when next week's video comes out. Okay, the last tip I wanna share with you is all about creating a default behavior. This means that we can actually teach our puppies to perform a certain behavior when something very specific happens. A good example would be, let's say there's a knock at the door. Our puppy could immediately go to their bed and lay down. Or for those barking puppies, they might find a toy to put in their mouth instead. In order to teach a behavior like this, we do have to break down the sequence into multiple baby steps. Little baby steps. We then start to layer the steps together until we get to the finished product. Teaching a behavior like this will take time, but it's better than the alternative, which may be a puddle at your company's feet or barking dog when guests enter your home or somebody knocks on the door and then there's more barking. The first step is to teach your puppy the behavior without the pressure of company present or whatever the trigger may be. Once your puppy has an understanding of the behavior, you'll slowly start to add in mild distractions while you practice the skill. Now you'll eventually add in distance away from your puppy too. For more information on how to slowly turn up the training dial and how to work on better puppy behavior, I do recommend you check out my free workshop called 
better puppy behavior. I'll post a link to this in the description below for you. Now, go slow with the training. Think of what you want your puppy's behavior to look like and start practicing before the big show. All right, in the comments below, tell me what gets your puppy overly excited.